Hi, my name is Hendrik, and my topic is generating symmetry and symmetry breaking and send bubbler patterns, which is to say I'm presenting computational experiments in which an animal behavior, uh, send bubbler behavior, that means a um, property of living matter is used to generate visual art. Uh, in this talk, I will uh, start with the inspiration of this work, and uh, then I will briefly uh, show some, some features of the animal behavior and how this animal behavior can be used as a template for algorithmic description for generating visual art as a generative art. And in the main part of my talk, I will show experiments how symmetry and uh, symmetry breaking uh, can be included into, into a generation process. And symmetry not only means uh, geometric symmetry, but also um, a color symmetry. And then I will show some visual results. Some results are already presented here and end with some conclusion and some outlook. I will start with the inspiration of this work. And the inspiration of this work was a um, family holiday on a tropical beach. And um, here's me and, and holiday and my family and some tropical beaches. And this tropical beach were on the island of Yonkawi, which is here in the border region between Thailand and Malaysia and Southeast Asia. And as I was uh, walking on the beach, I noticed this kind of patterns in the sand. And at first, I thought that these patterns are man-made, but after a while I realized they are not man-made at all. They are created by a small animal, and this small animal is called a sand bubbler crab. You see here on the hand, they are really tiny, and as part of their lifestyle, they are creating this uh, pattern in the sand. They consist of small sand balls, and they are curves and spirals and straight and bent lines, and they have a uh, radial orientation. And if we look at these small animals, we see it here. Um, they are living on a beach, on a beach which um, is uh, regularly flooded. And they're living in a burrow, which is here. And if the flood is gone, they are coming out and they are feeding on the sand. They are uh, collecting eatable particles on the sand. And um, in this feeding process, they are going in a radial direction from the burrow outside and they are searching the sand for something, some eatable components in there. And uh, the sand they have searched, they form into a wall and throw them behind. And supposedly they are doing that for indicating which region of the sand they already searched. And so in the end, <coughs> In such a colony of sand bubbler, uh, in the end, the, the, wool, um, the wool beach is covered by this pattern uh, until the next flood washes this uh, pattern away. So if we take this pattern and uh, try a simple mathematical model, we can say that there is a burrow location here in the center, and then there are some radial lines. They are called trenches in the biological literature, and on this um, trenches there are pellets and I can specify the pellet location by the bore location and some radial location and the trench angle here. And by adding a small a small random term, I can make these patterns to look similar to the pattern you find on these tropical beaches. So this is uh, the pattern making and uh, in the main part of my, of my work, I was uh, using this pattern making as a kind of test bed for experimenting with uh, symmetry. And uh, it uh, seems to be a curious fact that symmetry is a very important uh, organizational principle in both biology, that means in living matter, as for instance here with this leaf or with this butterfly, but also in art, that means in aesthetically pleasing objects. Examples here are these works by M.C. Escher, for instance, it's Day and Night, which has a lot of symmetry in there, or this drawing hands, which also um, plays with symmetry as a, as a guiding principle. And usually we 
find such kind of uh, uh, artworks that include symmetry are particularly pleasing. Um, if we are looking at um, two dimensions, which uh, is what I have done, then there are four different types of uh, symmetry in two dimension. Again, examples can be seen here in the windows and the ceilings and uh, floors of uh, different religious buildings all over the world. And these patterns are usually made uh, from these four kinds of symmetry. This reflection, that means I have my object and I reflect it on this reflection axis. Or I have rotation, I have a rotation center point and I'm just turning it around here or I have a translation by moving it from here to here or I have a glide reflection or transflection where I reflect the, the object on a reflection axis and then I'm moving that. Apart from the geometric aspects of uh, symmetry, there's also uh, something which is called color symmetry. And again, uh, as an example, uh, can be uh, an example is a work by M.C. Escher, this horseman here. And here finds uh, a lot of symmetry in this picture. For instance, in translation uh, symmetry, where this uh, horseman is just moved from here to here or from here to here. But uh, also a reflection, or more precise, the glide reflection. I have this horseman here and I reflect it and move it up here. And uh, the interesting bit in this um, picture is that different types or different kinds of symmetry are producing color symmetry with either the, uh, the symmetry is preserving a color, which is done for the translation, or change the color, which is done for the reflection. In other words, um, if you say that a symmetry means that symmetry properties are defined by isometric maps, that means by symmetry groups. Then a color symmetry means that uh, the symmetry properties defined by these isometric maps additionally define a coloring of uh, symmetric objects. And for coloring the symmetric objects, we need a column permutation. And what I, I have done in the work I'm uh, showing you later is to realize such a color permutation by uh, mapping on a color wheel. Two examples are given here, for instance, this red, yellow, blue color wheel or this red, green, blue color wheel. And what you can do now is to use colors on this color wheel as a color permutation. For instance, if you, for instance, take yellow, then you may take uh, purple as uh, a permutation or you may also use one of the other permutations, but do uh, you use colors that are exactly opposite um, on the color wheel, uh, called complementary colors, and they are supposed to look very nice together, for instance, green, blue, and red. These aspects are the aspects of um, symmetry. We now come to uh, symmetry breaking. Um, on a rather abstract level, symmetry means that um, the symmetry is playing with our expectations. It means uh, if we know that this uh, object is symmetric, then we know that this half and this half is somehow similar or also almost the same. That means uh, symmetry also implies that there's a redundancy, and this redundancy means that uh, we have no novelty in the redundant, um, the re the redundant object. That means if I take away half of this uh, of this leaf here, you automatically may reproduce what is in here. So uh, symmetry breaking means that you uh, disturb this playing with the expectations. That means you disturb the redundancy, and in this way you create something new and maybe create something interesting. And this is uh, well known since uh, ancient time in visual art that. Um, in visual art, I can produce a symmetry breaking if I move or remove or recolor elements of the visual representation. An example is this uh, um, um, painting here by Salimani, um, where we have symmetry between these two people. 
But uh, you also have a lot of symmetry breaking. You have a beard here, and you have no beard, and you have uh, different uh, different colors in here. And uh, this play with symmetry on the one hand and a breaking of symmetry on the other hand is making uh, such kind of pictures interesting to, to look at. And um, with these ideas, uh, I've been doing some, some experiments and I've been showing some, some results on that. Uh, these are the first results. These are sand poplar patterns and they are looking somehow similar to the sand poplar patterns you find on tropical beaches with the main difference that on tropical beaches the sand has one color, that means the sand, how it is found on the beach, while in the artificial, uh, in the artificial pattern you can uh, color the pattern in every coloring scheme you like. And in another step, I have done some experiments with, uh, with symmetry. For instance, you see here a symmetry where you have three, three patterns down here and symmetric patterns up here. And uh, these patterns are colored with uh, the complementary colors. It means you have yellow and purple and red and green and orange and blue, and then slowly uh, a color symmetry breaking is uh, taking place where the colors on the color wheel are just mapped to the next slot on the color wheel. This is something I can also show you in a small experiment. I have here this picture and now the color is um, slowly replaced by exactly the next slot on the color wheel and in this way replaces the original colors by the colors that are, as I said, on the next slot of the, of the color wheels. Uh, in this way, you also replace the so-called uh, primary and secondary colors on the, on the color wheel by the by a, third, uh, by a third colors in there. With that, I'm coming to the end and the conclusion. So my conclusions are I go to holidays on tropical beaches and observe uh, amazing animal behavior, for instance, the behavior of the sand poplar crabs and in a simple mathematical model um, such uh, animal behavior can be captured and algorithms to reproduce such uh, algorithms can be can be designed and such algorithms can be used to create uh, visual artworks and uh, have uh, used this as a test bed for experimenting with color or color symmetry and symmetry breaking. There are some further topics here. I've not talked about the computation measures that's in the paper and there are also some more images and details on this page. With that, I thank you for your attention and I'm open to questions while knowing that answering question, one question may open up a lot of more questions.